everyone, my name is Elizabeth, I am a marine biologist and welcome back to Marine Mumbles, a channel where I am exploring the oceans, taking you along with me and telling you about the weird and wonderful creatures in our oceans. And today's episode is going to be really exciting because in a recent video I released I found a real life wild octopus for the very first time. And today I'm going to be talking about just how awesome they are. Octopuses are absolutely incredible, they are amazing, they resonate with my soul, they are fantastic, they are, they are all of the amazing words all mixed together in a creature. But one of the things that makes them particularly amazing is that they do one thing better than anything else on the entire planet and that is change colour. Now when we saw the octopus in the wild it changed from white to orange to red and octopuses are known to be able to change colour and texture and blend in with the environment almost perfectly. They are so good at this that I actually had someone come up to me and tell me that they didn't believe that octopuses actually changed colour and it was just Photoshop. But no, it's just nature being its absolutely incredible self and today I'm going to talk you through exactly how octopuses change colour. Mm. To explain how octopuses change colour, we need to look at their cells, and three cells in particular, chromatophores, iridophores and luciophores, are all cells that they use to change colour. Make sure you stick around to the end, because as I tell you about this, about how I tell you about changing colour, there is a big twist at the end that you just have to listen to, because it's just... It, it's a bit... I'm almost speechless when I found this out, so stick around. So let's talk about chromatophores first. These cells are basically sacs of colour that are either closed or opened or stretched, depending on whether you want to see the colour, not see the colour, or see a lot or a little of the colour. Octopuses can use chromatophores to change colour almost instantly, in milliseconds, not seconds, milliseconds. And compare that to basically what you think is the next best camouflaging thing, a chameleon. A chameleon is taking about 20 seconds to change colour, so they do it lightning fast. And that's because these chromatophores are controlled by nerves pulling apart and shutting these chromatophore cells. And nerves are incredible. Imagine if you put your hand near something hot, you quickly pull it back. That is your nerves moving muscles across a massive part of your body super, super fast. It's also the reason that when a great song comes on, you instantly dance. <laughs> first found the octopus it was a light colour similar to sand probably blending in and then there was a bit of a kerfuffle and the octopus got stressed out by some dogs and it changed to a more warning orange kind of um, tone then we decided we needed to move it just to make sure it was out the way and didn't get hurt and because we're big scary humans it turned red as a warning not to hurt it but we gently placed it back in the sea it was likely using its chromatophores for these changes because chromatophores you can actually only get in the colours in red, brown and yellow. Man, I wish I could use colour to communicate. How cool would that be if you were angry? You could just, you know, show that to the world. Okay, shall we try it? We can try it. I've, I've studied octopuses enough. Maybe I will be the first human to be able to do this. Okay, someone tell me that barnacles are not best and I will see if I can change colour. We can do this. I am the octopus. I am an octopus. I live the octopus, I breathe the octopus, let's see. Okay, barnacles are not best. <laughs> it worked, oh my goodness, I can't believe it worked. Wait, how do I change it back? But seriously, octopuses change colour way easier than it is for me to change uh, my hair colour. And, uh, but it's not just the reds and the yellows and browns that octopuses can change. They can change into a load and loads of colours. And to do this, they need the use of the other cells, the luciophores and the iridophores. The iridophores are really clever and they work by reflecting different wavelengths of lights at different angles. Now, actually, depending on the angle that you look at these cells depends on the colour changes. So if you look at it directly from the top, it looks blue. And if you look at it further down, it kind of changes into red. And by changing the texture of the surface, by changing the cells, you can actually change the colours that these reflect. 
And these slab cells are used primarily for camouflage, for being able to really just nail the colour that the octopus is trying to replicate. And it kind of colour corrects them with the other cells from the chromatophores to almost get this perfect colour pattern. It's really incredible. Please go watch some videos on octopus changing colour. They are fantastic. And how these all work together, even though they're just little dots, is very similar to how we make pictures on our screens, how we bring the wonderful video of outside world in and just watch it on the TV like we're there. And that is because we use pixels, which if you zoom in on the microscope setting on my camera onto a screen, you can actually begin to see the pixels. And these are things that are red, blue and green. And depending on what colour you want to show, they change the intensity and they change the light that is emitted from these pixels. And that is exactly what the octopus is doing but just in nature and it is incredible. So by using the blues, the reds, the yellows, the greens and everything, all the colours that they've got, changing the angles by changing the colours, changing the size, changing the intensity. I mean, I've done a very, very crude animation here, but that's by far not even showing the complexity that has to happen to do this. And not only that, octopuses are great at knowing their colour theory because to do this, you really need a clean canvas and that is exactly what the other cells, the luciophores, are doing. Now these reflect all wavelengths of light which means that the cells look white. Not only is that great for communicating, if you want to send a quick message or even mesmerise their prey, they turn white and it's a quick flash and they can use these cells to do that by reflecting the light to make it look bright white. But they also use it to get a bl blank canvas. So with this blank canvas, they can put all these different colours on top, meaning the colours are really vibrant and can be true to what the colour that they want to do. So why exactly are octopus so great at camouflage? Well, they're incredibly intelligent and that means communication is probably really important to them as well. Being able to communicate with um, members of the, the same species or just warnings in general, but really intelligence unfortunately only gets you so far. It gets you very, very far but potentially it only gets you so far. You can outsmart things, you can learn to be cleverer and better, and that all is amazing, and it is the reason octopuses have been so successful. But at the end of the day, when you come face to face with a shark, or a dolphin, or just any shark surface, the fact that octopuses are just squidgy, means that no type of intelligence is going to save them from being easily eaten unless they can use that intelligence and use that adaptation to be amazing at camouflage and that is what's happened they have become so successful at this camouflage because the alternative is the squishy thing being eaten and i think that's amazing that it's this combination of all of these different things that have just led to this one organism that is so great at so many things. And what makes it better is that they are a species that aren't vertebrate. They don't have a backbone. We associate intelligence with humans and us, but actually octopuses are super, super intelligent. I'll do another video on octopus intelligent another time because that's a whole nother video in itself. But the fact that they don't have a backbone, the fact that they're so opposite to us and they have evolved such intelligence and such even, I mean, this took ages to, to do my hair and they can change colour in a millisecond. Like that is so much cooler. Octopuses are just so much cooler. It's incredible. And it's about to get even more incredible with this weird twist of fact thing, right? Strap in, this is, uh, this is weird. Now, given that octopuses are so fantastic at colour theory and replicating things, this next fact is, was, it was a real shocker. We use cone cells in our eyes to detect colour. Humans have three cone cells in the eyes, which means we can see lovely colours. Mantis shrimp have 16 and Lord knows what type of colours they see. They are having a whale of a party on their own over there with their 16 cone eyes and I'm very jealous. Things that are colourblind are one, and so do octopuses. So they do all this. They are able to completely replicate their environment, have all this amazing colour theory and not 
you've seen in colour. So that is the one amazing aspect of an octopus. Do you think that an octopus is just that clever that from grayscale it can tell exactly what it needs to do to survive and stay away from predators? Or there is another option. And this is something that science doesn't completely understand or know yet. And is the fact that octopuses and cephalopods have these kind of horseshoe w shaped eyes scientists are wondering is it this w shaped eye that means that the way that they're seeing light to that one cone receptor can actually mean that they see color because it's one of those questions of it's so incredible to be able to do it colorblind that maybe there's something we're missing as scientists and our understanding of science that the octopus has evolved naturally and is able to see colour in a completely different way to what we know exists and how we see colour and I think that's incredible. I personally am inclined to think that maybe we don't understand the full science and that they can see in colour but at the moment we're assuming they're colourblind and how amazing is that? Comment down below what you think, which one is right and which one is, uh, isn't is so right. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really, really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe and share and let me know in the comments below what type of videos you want me to see and explain about the wonderful world of our oceans. See you next week. Bye.